What is the most bizarre fact you know? Story 1. A fungi grows next to the highly radioactive elephant's foot in the Chernobyl reactor. It feeds off the gamma rays emitted by the nuclear fuel in a process known as radiosynthesis. If you were exposed to similar levels of radiation, you would have a lethal dose in three minutes. Phototropic fungus was first discovered at the Chernobyl site in 1991, just after the collapse of the Soviet Union and the start of internationally aided cleanup and containment efforts. Not so sure about right next to the elephant's foot, but it was definitely found growing in large, flourishing colonies all throughout the site's cooling water supply. This fungus appears to use melanin, the same dark brown pigment that gives humans all their various normal skin tones, except in much, much higher concentrations, to power sugar-producing reactions by deriving energy from nuclear decay, the same way plants and cyanobacteria use the green pigment chlorophyll, to synthesize sugars by deriving energy from sunlight. Basically, this stuff is a mold colony that has the most extreme tan ever, and uses it to eat radiation. Similar fungi have been found accumulated on the exterior hulls of low-orbit spacecraft, and experiments were recently, 2018 to 2019, conducted to begin investigating if the stuff could be used as shielding to protect astronauts from solar and cosmic radiation. Apparently, the results were promising. Story 2. Titanic was fitted with microphones for receiving underwater bell signals. With this system, the sound of submarine bells was received through the hull of the vessel. Submarine bells, used as fog signals, were located on lightships, at lighthouses, and even on some specially equipped buoys. They were actuated by electric signals, compressed air, or simply by wave motion. Titanic had two submarine microphones on her hull, one on each side. These were the ears of the ship. By switching between the port and starboard microphones and comparing the volume of the bells, the navigation officer could determine the direction to the navigation aid. Sound travels much further through water than through air. These bells could be heard over 15 miles away through the headset, a pretty cool way of navigating at a time when GPS and radar didn't yet exist. Story 3. When caterpillars make their chrysalises, they don't just grow wings and change. They dissolve completely into goo, which then reforms into the butterfly. Better yet, if you train the caterpillars to dislike certain stimuli, the resulting butterflies retain that memory and will avoid the same stimuli. I don't have a source to hand, but I asked a relative who works a lot around butterflies. She said that it has actually been shown that they retain some structure during metamorphosis, including their nervous system, which explains the memory retention. Story 4. Most rune stones erected by Norsemen were erected by Christians, and they're often decorated with Christian crosses. Runic writing also continued for centuries after conversion, so it's not uncommon to see things like God help his soul on rune stones. It might not be so weird if one's intimately familiar with the topic, but I think a lot of people just seem to associate runic writing with paganism. Story 5. Sharks are older than trees. A lot older. 40 million years older. Trees as we familiarly know them today, a primary trunk, large height, crown of leaves or fronds, didn't appear on the planet until the late Devonian period, some 360 million years ago. You might be surprised to learn that sharks are older than trees as they've been around for at least 400 million years. Weirder, I understand all coal formed during the time after trees appeared, but before the bacteria that breaks them down after they fell. No new coal has formed in a very long time. 100 million years? Story 6. You can't explode C4 by shooting it, or by lighting it on fire. But you can by lighting it on fire and then shooting it. Actually, if it's on fire, you could hit it with a hammer and explode it, though only once for obvious reasons. A sharp enough sword can decapitate with no pain. Sort of like how razors sometimes cut you and you don't notice until it's bleeding and then it starts hurting. But in this case, you would be dead before your brain catches up. On the topic of decapitation, it's common for people to have time to make weird expressions between the time they lose their head and the part where they actually die. For this reason, it was a common practice for most of human history for people to grab the newly embodied head and show it its own decapitated corpse to see if it would react. The things people did before memes. Story 7. If a chicken eats the yolk in a chicken egg, it becomes addicted to it. I got another one which is creepier. There was an attack in World War I where the Germans gassed a bunch of Russian troops in Osawiec Fortress. The gas mixed with the water and the air in the lungs. So the troops didn't die of suffocation. They died because they were basically being melted alive. When the German troops rushed the castle, only 100 Russian troops were alive, and all of them were basically walking dead. This freaked the German troops out, and they ran. A lot of the Germans died in their own traps while retreating. Story 8. Whenever TV networks show previous Olympic cauldron lightings, they always skip the 1988 Seoul Olympics 1. The reason? They lit the cauldron by burning a bunch of doves alive, minutes after they were released to symbolize world peace. And it was all aired on live TV, worldwide. I remember the Seoul Olympics as being full of problems and controversies. 
One thing I saw happen live was in the boxing competition. They tried to have two fights at once with two boxing rings right next to each other. When the bell rang to end the round in one ring, a boxer in the other ring thought his round was over, so he dropped his hands and turned to walk back to his corner. His opponent got a free swing at him and knocked him out cold. Story 9. The width of railroad tracks in Western Europe and the U.S. is two horses' asses wide. The Romans created a lot of roads in Europe, and over time, carts and chariots, pulled by two horses or oxen, would wear ruts in the road. Later, when railroads were being built, the builders followed the ancient roads because it made their job of leveling and clearing land easier. Since there were two evenly spaced ruts extending thousands of miles in these roads, they used them to lay the first railroad tracks. This distance then became standard, and America followed the Western European standard. In other parts of the world, where the Roman Empire wasn't present, they have a different standard. Bonus fact. Some dot of the original equipment sent into space had to be transported by train. This meant that they had a maximum width of the train car it traveled on. That means some of the items that went to space were designed the way they were, in a roundabout way, because of two horses' asses. Story 10. Babies will learn language no matter what. Baby talk, also known as motheres, as English-speaking nations often slip into whilst talking to their babies, the simplified, dumbed-down, and higher-pitched speak, does nothing to teach children a language, nor does it further the progression of speech in children. In fact, many of the educational videos for children, such as Baby Einstein videos, actually slow learning. Children are truly sponges, and a video that shows a red ball and slowly says, ball, ball, reddit ball. The kid's brain registered it the first time. They're ready for the next word. In the same realm, children learn more quickly if they are spoken to in normal conversational speak rather than mother A's, although this is only in terms of rate of learning. There are many nations who do not talk to their children, not at all, until the child speaks first. The child still learns their language as completely as other nations. There are even some groups who don't address their children until the child says an entire sentence. They flat out ignore them until then. So, even if children learn more quickly through normal conversational speech, the rates eventually slow down and even out, and are met by these children who have never been spoken to, and eventually all children end up on the same level of language. In fact, some children who aren't spoken to actually do learn at the same rate as those who are spoken to in normal conversational speech, because they overhear it between adults. It doesn't have to be addressed to them specifically. Pretty interesting stuff. Story 11, I had to do a report once on Tycho Brahe, the astronomer that Kepler based a lot of his research on. Brahe was one screwed up dude. Where do I start? He lost part of his nose in a sword duel over a math formula. He also had a tamed elk that he kept around his castle. Funny enough, the elk died during one of Brahe's famous parties because it drank a lot of beer and fell down the stairs. Brahe also kept a psychic dwarf in his castle that he liked to dress up as a clown and make him sit underneath the dinner table and not say anything. Yeah, he knew how to live. Story 12. I suppose this is interesting. Small breeds of cats, like house cats, regular cats, whatever, meow to communicate with their mother as kittens. But once adults, cats meow only to communicate with humans. I thought this was interesting because I once read an article that throughout years and years of evolution and breeding, domesticated cats have kept the majority of the original feline instincts, such as cats will almost always search for water elsewhere first if their water is beside their food, because in the wild, the instinct is to not drink from water near their kill, as it may be contaminated. Also, I believe a cat's meow is the equivalent of a lion's roar, just higher pitch relative to their size. No source just an assumption. In the wild, lions use their roar to either declare territory or to show dominance, such as before they maul their prey, they let out a deafening roar. I think it's interesting to see the similarities and differences between the two. Also, how funny would it be if your pet, cat of course, would let out a great big squeaky meow before an attack on bugs, etc. Story 13. Neural implants exist, and recently, unbelievably advanced ones exist. They record your short-term memory, translate it in a computer to long-term memory, then send it back to the part of the brain that stores long-term memory. This is a function the brain would normally do on its own, but some people's brains are damaged in certain areas. In the rodent tests, this helped the animals that had had their memory impaired to store the memories and recall them later for tasks. It also showed an improvement in memory in unaffected rodents, and it's already in human trials. Humans are walking around with those in their brains. Story 14. I have a few. There is a tree called the sandbox tree, whose fruit, a pinecone sort of thing, explodes when ripe, embedding the seeds into the ground. Elephants in the wild now are becoming less and less likely to have tusks. The genes for big tusks, or tusks at all, are being selected against because of how much poaching is going on. There is a jellyfish, lion's mane jellyfish, off the coast of Australia that grows has a cap that is five feet in diameter, 
and tentacles that grow to be 120 feet. There are crows in New Caledonia, creatively named New Caledonian crows, that are so smart. They were put in cages, and while the lab was empty overnight, they opened their cages and disassembled some of the things in the room, including a fire alarm, looking for a way out. Story 15. The latest observations of the universe suggest that it's infinite in extent, as a consequence, and an unavoidable consequence at that, there exists an infinite number of duplicate Earth. There are literally an infinite number of duplicates of you out there. Why? Imagine you could summarize any region of the universe as being one face of a six-sided dice. You throw the dice and look at one possible arrangement of the region you're interested in. Let's say it's the Earth's solar system. You throw the dice again, and it all changes. And you repeat this process seven times. On the seventh throw, you've exhausted all the unique possibilities and two regions of the universe will be arranged identically. In reality, the number of unique arrangements you can have in any region of space is going to be unimaginably high, but it doesn't matter. The important thing is that the number would be finite, and when measured next to infinity, it's nothing. So there you have it. Somewhere out there is another you, an infinite number of other yous, in fact, and even more just like you but slightly different. Shame you're not one of the ones with the supermodel wife and world's biggest lottery win. Story 16. Not really weird, but there were no grasses on the earth when dinosaurs were here. During the Jurassic and the early Cretaceous, the higher flora was dominated by cycads, ginkgos, conifers, and ferns. Other groups of plants included extinct seed plants with fern-like foliage. The exact origins of flowering plants are uncertain, although evidence suggests that they are not closely related to any group of modern non-flowering plants. Flowering plants underwent a rapid radiation beginning around the middle of the Cretaceous period and make up around 90% of living plant species today. With the spread of these plants came the decline of previously dominant groups such as conifers. During the Cretaceous, ferns would also begin to diversify. The oldest known fossils of grasses are from the early Cretaceous, with the family having diversified into modern groups by the end of the Cretaceous. The oldest large flowering trees are known from the late Cretaceous, with the trunk having a preserved diameter of 1.8 meters and an estimated height of 50 meters from story 17. In recent times, more people have become aware of the story of the SS Daniel J. Morell, a Great Lakes ship that broke in half, and people on the front section thought they saw another ship coming to rescue them, but it was in fact the rear section approaching them under power. What people seldom learn is that when the wreck pieces were discovered, the lifeboats of the rear section weren't deployed in the apparently three hours that it continued to steam along before sinking, thus leading analysts to conclude that the staff in the rear section had no idea the ship had even broken apart until it sank. Story 18. In the animal kingdom, there is a type of jellyfish called the immortal jellyfish scientifically known as Turritopsis dohernai. What makes it fascinating is its ability to revert back to its earliest form after reaching adulthood. When facing environmental stress or old age, it can transform its cells, essentially returning to a polyp stage and then growing into a new adult jellyfish. This process can theoretically repeat indefinitely, hence the name immortal jellyfish. While it's not truly immortal in the sense of living forever, it has an exceptional regenerative capability that allows it to bypass the typical life cycle limitations of other organisms. Story 19. Karl the Twan almost caused a political crisis with Russia when he, in the middle of an important diplomatic talk, suddenly disappeared one night without a trace. After several hours of frantic searching, raised voices and accusations, a stable boy revealed what had happened. The king had simply decided that he didn't want to waste any more time with pointless discussions and went back to Sweden without informing anyone. Do note that the main topic of discussion was the potential marriage between Karl the Point and the Russian princess, so, you know, ouch. Story 20 millions of horses died in World War I. This was due to the fact that automotive transportation wasn't all there yet, despite biplanes being used for bombing or dart dropping for the first time. Pair this with the fact it was the first war with centerfire rifle cartridges, and it spelled devastation. Many cavalry units who were once the elites and best of the best in war were like, F it, we are the best, these center fire rifles won't affect us. Boy, were they wrong. Story 21. Your nose is impacting your vision 100% of the time. However, your brain erases it most of the time and fills in the blanks. You can test this by closing one eye or putting your finger on the tip of your nose or just really focusing on it. This fact kind of freaked me out at first because I didn't like the fact that my brain just decided I don't need to see something that is 100% real. Made me wonder what else our brains are doing in that same regard. The first time I took a figure drawing class, I learned real quick that our eyes are lying to us all the time. It's a big part of why drawing humans accurately is so hard. Almost everyone's first face we drew in class had way yai too big eyes and mouths, really messed up facial proportions, and noses and ears that were way too small, noses, or wildly misplaced, ears. 
Since most of our nonverbal communication is spoken or exchanged through glances or eye contact, we place way higher importance on those features when trying to commit faces to paper. It's very weird. I enjoyed the experience, but found it a little unsettling. Story 22. Nematodes. In short, if all the matter in the universe except the nematodes were swept away, our world would still be dimly recognizable, and if, as disembodied spirits, we could then investigate it, we should find its mountains, hills, vales, rivers, lakes, and oceans, represented by a film of nematodes. The location of towns would be decipherable since, for every massing of human beings, there would be a corresponding massing of certain nematodes. Trees would still stand in ghostly rows representing our streets and highways. The location of the various plants and animals would still be decipherable. And, had we sufficient knowledge, in many cases even their species could be determined by an examination of their erstwhile nematode parasites. Story 23. Maybe not the objectively strangest, but it just came up this morning. I'm trying to show somebody that UFO whistleblower Bob Lazar is a serial faker and con artist, and mentioned that he moved his underage at the time they started dating mistress into his dead wife's houses days after she supposedly committed suicide under suspicious circumstances, with Bob telling cops that he was away because he's a race car driver. Literally. It sounds so nuts you couldn't make it up. Well, officer, I was driving a race car when my wife wrote that note saying it's all her fault and definitely killed herself. No, that teenage female isn't our daughter. It's my girlfriend and she lives here now. It's so comically crazy. Yet that's all from public record. Do I think he murdered her? It's a non-zero percent probability, but I think it's unlikely. But he was more than happy for her to be gone and to speed run that teen poon into his wife's house. And I hate that I know that much about somebody that's not me. Like the amount of crap I found out about him while doing a deep dive for a documentary I'm editing, and hopefully will one day finish, is wild. There's nobody on earth besides me that I know as much about. Story 24. Decades ago, I read a theory that the Smurfs were vaguely inspired by a lineage of folklore that may have their origins in historical accounts of the Saxons coming into contact with the various peoples inhabiting what we today call the Scottish Highlands. I'm going by memory here, so I apologize. But apparently there are stories of these early interactions probably with the Picts, that usually describe the people as blue and aggressive. From these interactions, you get generation upon generation of folklore talking about clever and cunning peoples of Britain, which probably gets brought back to a homeland and further modified and exaggerated until it comes to the point where people are talking about tiny, mythical, sharp-toothed blue creatures who live in the woods. Then, kind of like how Disney turns dark Grimm Brothers stories into happy endings, these scary little creatures are turned into Die Schlumpfe, a.k.a. the Smurfs. Sadly, I haven't been able to find any reference of this online and I've been searching for almost 30 years. But I know I read it somewhere. It's quite possible it was just some folklore dissertation at my university that never got digitized in the 90s. Story 25. Most life forms on the planet Earth are carbon-based, except for the sulfur-based bacteria that live in the extreme toxic lips of underwater volcanoes where the water is at boiling. People are referred to as long pig by Papua New Guinea cannibal tribes because they taste like pig when you cook them and eat them. Humans can survive in the cold for far longer than people thought if they know the Iceman's breathing technique. They can also change the chemistry of their blood. Australian cockatoos can live to be 96 or older, and they very often outlive their owners. Of the world's most venomous species, Australia has the top 26 of them. But more people die from bees and animal livestock, because most people know not to touch Australian native animals. After exercise, getting into a cold bath will enable your muscles to metabolize the lactic acid, and they won't be anywhere near as sore. Saunas and ice baths can kill some viruses and bacteria because they cannot deal with the temperature change. It's like an extreme version of a high and low temperature cycle. The Western world is facing a diabetes crisis because of the obscene amount of sugar in their daily diet. Sugar is added to almost everything, even savory dishes to make them bitter. And a high-carbohydrate diet is the rest. 70% of American military-age males are either so obese, drug-affected, or sick that they are useless to the military. Americans are literally eating themselves to early graves. Growing kelp farms to feed livestock. The livestock fart about 60% less on kelp. Also as natural fertilizer and carbon removal from the ocean may be our last best hope at reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Kelp is also extremely healthy for people. Kelp farms also create habitat for sea life. It's insane that we are not growing as much kelp as we humanly can.